After 37 years of this work, of building an organization that is strong and is, is doing great work in terms of responding to the need, I thought this was a good time as I'm hitting my 70s to be able to say it's time to really turn over the, the reins to a new generation of leadership. I'm John Parvensky, the president and CEO of the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. Over the years, a lot of construction pictures. We started as a small organization responding to the increase of homelessness that was, uh, we were seeing in the mid-80s. We had a staff of six and a budget of $100,000. Uh, today we have a staff of about 750 people. Unfortunately, even with that um, expansion, it hasn't been enough to keep up with the need uh, that we see in our communities. The common denominator of homelessness through, uh, throughout those 37 years has been the lack of affordable housing, the lack of housing options for people. Everyone knows now we're in a housing crisis, an affordable housing crisis. Our economic system is designed such that housing is a commodity, land is a commodity. If you own it, you want the value of it to go up. If you don't own it, uh, you fall further and further behind. People experiencing homelessness are, are just regular folks like you and I. The challenges that they have in terms of overcoming and esca escaping homelessness, uh, becoming housed again, that's really the work that we do, and we do that on an individualized basis. We meet people where they are, we engage them, we build their trust, we find out what it is that they want in their lives, uh, what are the barriers preventing them from achieving that, and then we work with them to identify a plan to get to where they want to be. 99 times out of 100, uh, that's a successful approach. Seeing somebody move into a, a new apartment, people break down and cry uh, when they know that they have somebody who's looking out for them. I don't think I've had a chance to internalize what it's going to mean for me uh, when I walk out the door for the last time. <clears throat> but it's, um, you know, it's been a lifelong journey. Uh, it's been so rewarding. And the staff that we've been able to work with, it's just been tremendous. My daughter was born six weeks before I started working here. She and the coalition grew up together. She actually volunteered at the coalition. She actually uh, designed her first website when she was 12. Right? And so she has um, grown up uh, along with this organization, um, has been an inspiration to me, uh, and has gone on to to basically commit her life to social justice as well. Reflecting on, you know, 37 years of doing this work, one of the, the things that's most disappointing is that despite our success in terms of building housing, of housing almost 5,000 people a night, that there are still more people who are becoming homeless. We haven't figured out how to stop new people from losing their housing and ending up um, turning to us for help. A lot of that, again, is driven by the housing economy. We have never, as a community, as a society, invested enough in affordable housing, in healthcare and mental health to deal with the needs of those folks who are particularly the most marginalized. People have been left on their own and more people uh, have fallen through the cracks and ended up homeless. We need to invest in the solutions that we know work on an individual and family basis, providing subsidies to allow people to rent housing, building enough affordable housing, providing supportive housing for folks who have health, mental health, addiction, or other disabilities. The evidence is there to suggest that the solutions work and if we do more of it, it actually ends up costing us less and we end up with a better quality of life, not only for the individual who otherwise is on the street, but also for the neighbor, the business person who has to walk over them or around them. I tell business leaders all the time that if 
every time it rained, the streets and the buildings flooded, and all you did is curse the rain, the likelihood is the problem is not going to solve, and the next time it rains, you'll have the same situation. Well, the same is true as it relates to human capital and dealing with the issues of affordable housing and homelessness. If all we do is say, you know, Dan, why are there so many people who are on the streets and we're not investing in the solutions at the level necessary to solve the problem, um, it, it's, uh, it would be moronic to think that the problem is going to be solved. It's like having a vaccine for a disease but only giving it to 5% of the population and think that's going to solve it. We need to bring the solutions that we know work up to the level, again, of the scale of the problem. And that's where we really have fallen short. You know, we see a lot of folks who aren't successful. Um, you know, we, we see premature death because of the toll that life on the street has taken. My message to the staff is don't give up believe and live the mission and the philosophy of service. We have some folks who have been here almost as long as I have, 30 years plus, who continue to do the work because they believe in it, they believe in the mission, and they know that what they do makes a difference in the lives of people. You know, I still see there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, uh, Some certainly some advocacy and policy work that I can do uh, without the day-to-day uh, the -day uh, struggles of running an organization and so that's probably the next stage that I'll do once I come back up for air.